Welcome to our panel on uh, National Glamour Coordinators. Um, since we're going to spend the next almost hour and a half together, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Shani Ellenstein. I'm from Israel. I work as the National Glam Coordinator for um, the um, Israeli chapter and um, newly elected board member. Um, actually, I'm very happy to be here and honored and excited. Thinking um, about the past year, it's quite amazing um, how everything came to be. Last year, uh, Wikimedia Haifa, I was um, just like you, sitting in the audience. I wasn't even a Wikipedian. I just came to um, hear some lectures. A friend told me, I think you should come. And uh, I came and um, basically listened to a few of the people who are sitting now here <laughs> on the panel. I got so inspired and uh, I was hooked. That was it. Um, so it was, I was very lucky um, to have the support of many people throughout this year to be able to um, start GLAM in Israel. And um, I want to tell you a bit about why we're here today and why I've summoned so many people from around the world, um, many friends, to uh, help me with this panel. So um, we are here today to talk about um, national GLAM coordinators, as you know. Last year in Haifa, uh, I think it's safe to say, it's safe to say that um, the focus of most of the GLAM sessions were Wikipedia in residence, which, um, I mean, these people were doing an amazing job all over the world and it was so inspiring. But since then, a lot has happened in the global community and um, things have uh, progressed and evolved. And um, just uh, thinking throughout the middle of the year, we finally came to, to realize that um, things are um, happening a bit different in every country, but there is some kind of common denominator. and. Um, uh, we found that uh, a lot of countries that were doing GLAM were um, having coordinators to, um, who, uh, who were having um, um, a side, uh, I mean, an overview of uh, what's happening all over the, the country, and not only Wikipedia in residence who were focused on specific projects. So the first thing we'd like uh, to do today um, is basically raise global awareness to the fact that this is happening uh, in many countries. And um, we're gonna um, have, we are very happy that we have a platform to discuss it, I think for the first time as a movement, um, why it's happening and what it is that we actually do. Um, and we're gonna divide today's panel to uh, four parts, basically. The first part, um, we'll discuss a bit on why it's happening and what are the things that uh, a national GLAM coordinator actually does and how it's different from a Wikipedia in residence. Um, the second part, we'll, we'll use it as a base to talk in the second part um, on what are the unique experiences of um, various countries. We, we all know uh, we are all for diversity and different countries have uh, different ways to do GLAM and um, to even, even to do this role. And the third part, we'll try to, uh, we really wanted to keep this panel um, in a way um, productive and we wanted to, um, to finish it with um, having some kind of uh, uh, a, a list or characteristics of what it takes to, to do what it is that we all do and um, what the common denominator to all of us, despite the differences, what do we have in common and what we, we all need to have to, um, to do this role. So, it might uh, help other countries that are developing um, GLAM. And uh, the fourth uh, part is going to be just a panel with you guys. Uh, we want to, uh, to interact and to ask questions and uh, we're gonna open it to um, questions, which I'm sure you're gonna have. So let's begin. <laughs> and I'm gonna use basically my uh, experience in Israel, um, telling you a bit about uh, why we we finally found that we need a role such as a national uh, GLAM coordinator. And it's something that happened throughout working on project uh, with uh, Wikipedia in residence. Um, some of you may have heard this morning, uh, Alison, Dr. Alison Kupitsky from the Israel Museum talk about our uh, first project. It started right after Wikimania um, in Haifa last year. And we, we did have a Wikipedia in residence um, at the museum for about two months. 
And throughout the work, it became quite clear that there are certain things that we don't want the Wikipedian in resident um, to deal with. We wanted to free him to do uh, whatever he needs to do um, to work on um, facilitating knowledge with the institution. To uh, We wanted him to uh, be able to focus on finding interesting things in the archives uh, of the museums. We wanted him to be able to focus on uh, having a good connection, a, a good relationship with the staff of the museum. And in order to do that, uh, he needed to be freed, in a way, from, uh, for example, dealing with um, bureaucracy and all sorts of technical stuff. So it started like that. It started um, as, a, as a need uh, in the process of, of the project. And um, when we progressed into the project, um, we started uh, also doing uh, conferences in Israel, presenting the, the project, and it became quite clear that uh, this specific Wikipedian in residence, he's really good at, um, for example, one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, tutoring or just working with small groups like the staff of the museum, but he did, doesn't really like um, to, to lecture, to, to be part of big conferences, and also, many other GLAMs in Israel started to hear about what we're doing with the Israel Museum and wanted to, to join in. And uh, so it became clear to us that we want someone who will be able to have some, um, something like a, an accumulative, accumulative uh, wisdom, um, who can use the, the knowledge from each project and move it to the next one. So that was one thing that we uh, wanted to do. Um, in Israel, we also, the, the Wikipedia in Resident was um, basically hired by both the museum and um, the chapter, the Israeli chapter. So because he was kind of, he kind of had two bosses. So we wanted him to be free from the need to, uh, to be pushed um, by the museum and to really focus on the job. So we needed someone who can talk to the museum and um, really direct the project. So that was part of uh, what I did to help the Wikipedia in resident uh, do his job. So besides that, um, we started, as I said, talking to more GLAMs and it, it became very clear that we need someone who knows what's happening all over the, the country, who has knowledge of all the projects, so um, he can communicate with uh, more institutions and um, be sort of the, the contact person or the face of uh, GLAM in Israel. Um, so what I think about what we do is basically help the Wikipedia in resident um, and, and also help create um, a national community that does GLAM. It was very important for us when we started the project to, um, to use it not only to bring more Wikipedians to the project, but also as an outreach tool and to bring people from the public, for example, and um, harness the, the specific project with the Israel Museum, or it doesn't matter with which institution. We had uh, another um, collaboration with the National Library of Israel, and it, it doesn't matter which project it is. We want to invite people from the public to, to join in. So it was important for us when we started working with the public uh, we, find out, we found out quite soon that um, some of them were <laughs> really struggling with the interface uh, of uh, Wikipedia. It, could be, it, it can be a bit intimidating, as some of you <laughs> may know. To, um, and some people couldn't even uh, find the, um, the way to sign in on the page where we invited people to, uh, to come to a behind the scene tour or to uh, an edit-a-thon. So we found, we found that we needed um, um, an, an email. So we created, um, for the first time, a means of, of communication with the public. It was really important. And it was amazing because um, this glam email address um, suddenly got all kinds of responses, not only related to glam, just people from the, from the public saying stuff or wanting to correct stuff and they didn't know how to do it or who to contact. So <laughs> it was... Uh, Kind of, I mean, we all know it. We know that we need a, a better uh, interface. 
Um, but uh, it was important for us to have a tool to communicate with the public for the first time. And then, after having the people um, come from outside, you need um, two things. And one was to, to um, use your community that is already existing, I mean, all the already uh, existing Wikipedians, to help teach these people. Um, and so we, in every editathon, for example, that we did, we invited uh, people to a workshop from the public, to a workshop before, and uh, we had uh, experienced Wikipedians sitting with total newbies and teaching them how to edit, and then we continued to the editathon itself. So these are parts of uh, the things that we did. And after people came in and did the workshop and uh, learned how to edit in Wikipedia, we needed a, um, a way to continue being in touch and make sure that they stay um, involved and uh, remain part of the community. So the one-on-one -on -one connection was really important. And uh, we also created um, an, an inner glam list for Israel which was helpful for us um, to communicate better with newcomers. So these were some of the things that we um, did in order to, um, to create a glam community. Um, so, so again, we, we, would focus about, we would focus on inreach, um, reaching to Wikipedians and just uh, bringing them into our glam projects and also bringing people from the outside. And for the Wikipedian in residence, to, um, to do all of that was quite impossible. I mean, he could not, <laughs> in the time span that he had, focus on, I don't know, releasing content and uh, making sure that um, articles are being written by experts and uh, facilitate a, a good relationship with uh, museums or glam staff um, and do that as well. So that was part of what we do um, as uh, GLAM coordinators to help the specific projects or help the Wikipedian resident doing his job. So that was one more thing that, um, that we did, um, create kind of, uh, of a network. Um, another very important aspect of uh, what we do, and I think all the panelists are gonna agree, is that all of us are in good relation with the um, international uh, GLAM community. We have a mailing list, cultural partners. If you um, are doing GLAM and you're not on it, you should be. Um, just contact me or any other person here on the stage and we'll get you uh, <laughs> on it. And this is a really important tool for us to know what's happening worldwide and uh, to be in contact with other people who are doing the same thing as we are and basically learn from each other's experiences. Um, that and uh, we also uh, want to take the, the time to acknowledge um, and thank Rock Drum, who's uh, helping us. Yeah, hi. Who's helping us um, publish every month um, the This Month in, in Glam uh, newsletter. And that's a really crucial, I think, crucial um, tool that we all, that all of us have uh, in our work. So every national Glam coordinator basically um, finds himself or herself connected to that list and uh, learning what's happening worldwide. And it's a really important tool that we have when we go to, to talk to GLAMs because we can say to them, well, this is not happening only here, it's happening everywhere in the world. And uh, I found that coming from a small country, relatively, we're tiny, um, it's very helpful. So every, um, anyone who wants to begin GLAM or develop GLAM needs to, to be able to, to have this tool set to know what's happening all over the world and be connected to the community that is already existing. So those are part of the things that um, we found that we need to do that were separate to what the Wikipedia in residence was doing. Um, and the amazing thing was that I was just, you know, I was so, uh, I do it voluntarily. I'm, I'm not paid for it. Some of the other panel members, um, that's their job. So for me, it was just the most hectic and crazy uh, year. And I, I'm saying it just because it's important to, to, um, 
uh, it's important to understand that when you have so much stuff to do, and the Wikipedia in residence also is, is very much under pressure to do things on time and to move on uh, with the milestones of the project, it's very important to be on top of things. So all of the things that we, that we were doing were helping us to, um, to basically stay in, in touch with the community, help the Wikipedian in residence work um, in his project and, um, and, and have a successful project. And a successful project is not only about um, how many pictures we uploaded to Commons or how many articles we've written, it's also about uh, creating a, a community. And there are stuff that we can measure and it's important for us in every project to have milestones that are measurable, um, but there are also stuff that you can't measure and how many people joined in, how, how tight your community is, um, and, and how much in touch um, you are with what's happening worldwide. So all of these things are things that are not connected to just one uh, project, but to, to everything. And you need some kind of um, view, uh, a better view to, to, uh, on a national level at least, um, to be able to do it. So, now that you know a bit more about what we do, um, I'd like to, to introduce all my friends here at the panel and uh, just to open up um, the discussion with them. To, uh, I'd like them to, to share how what they're doing is, is different or unique in their own country because um, we always talk about diversity and we did say that every GLAM project is quite different than the other. So, and every country has a way of doing stuff um, that is different and unique. So, I'd like to begin with, actually, with um, Liam Wyatt. Uh, we all, we, we basically owe everything to him. He was the first Wikipedian in residence. And, and then, uh, he became um, sort of the, the engine uh, on, the, on the international level. So, I think it would be quite interesting to say, to, to hear what he has to say about uh, about this, about uh, what's happening. So, Liam? Yeah, everything is possibly a bit too expansive, but <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I was the, uh, the first Wikipedian in residence and, and brought GLAM as, as a, an acronym to, to the Wikiverse. Um, and then following from uh, being the Wikipedian in residence at the British Museum, Last year, as probably many of you know, I was the Wikimedia Foundation Fellow for Cultural Partnerships. So not the manager of GLAM at the foundation, but the supporter of the community around the world to do, to begin and to get some momentum running in lots of different countries and make sure they talk to each other. And so from a historical perspective, Oh, and that also means that I'm the only person here who is not a national GLAM coordinator, uh, nor has ever been one, so I'm, I'm actually quite out of place in that sense. Uh, from a historical perspective, this is really quite um, exciting to be at this point of the conversation. I remember, and probably some of you remember, two, three, four years ago, how Glam discussions in, in Wikimedia were only about how many photographs can we extract from cultural organizations' archives without them knowing, or as fast as we can. And the conversation has progressed beyond uh, questions of, but if we work with a museum, that would be a conflict of interest, or but if we pay someone for doing a full-time job, that would undermine the role of the volunteer. It's much more nuanced and much more mature conversation about how can nations and regional organizations help their communities actually go out into the, into the real world to the venerable organizations in their countries that have been there for several hundred years in some cases, doing the kind of job that Wikipedia wants to do, educating the public. Um, so to be at this point of the game is, is fantastic. The several recommendations I made at the end of last year's, my fellowship, were that 
my fellowship's role be continued globally, supported by the Wikimedia Foundation, uh, with a new person each year. That didn't happen. Uh, that there be specific support for the USA being somewhere that has huge glam activity, not just potential, and no chapter with the unique situation of America. And so we have Laurie, who we'll hear from soon. Thirdly, that we have uh, some software support for mass uploading of multimedia, which just doesn't exist currently. And we now have that coming up. If you could raise your hand, if you were listening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and finally, that the chapters that can who have that capacity start talking about professionalizing or formalizing their relations with their <coughs> cultural sector, their GLAM institutions, in, in, the, in the figure of a national coordinator, which we now have a series of, which is, which is really quite inspiring and in, in enthusiastic. I feel enthusiastic about the future of, of the GLAM movement, that every year this gets a much more mature conversation. Yeah, and I think it's definitely the, the next step after just having one first project, or whether it's a Wikipedia in resident program or not, it was definitely taking things to the next level for each of us and in each country. And, and it was happening without, um, I think that's what, uh, what's amazing, that it's happening all over the world without us planning it. Um, I, for us, it happened naturally. And then I came to think of it, and I, I realized, hey, it's happening there and there and there and there as well. So it's definitely important for us to be able to discuss it today. It's, it's come to a point where there is a need. There are so many institutions that want to work with Wikipedia Wikimedians in their country that we have the good problem of too many important cultural organizations wanting to talk to us for the capacity that the Wikimedia community has to deal with them. And, and maybe that Laurie requires can, coordination. So let me introduce uh, Laurie Phillips um, from the US, um, and she can talk about that a bit. <laughs> oh, thanks, Johnny. Um, so yeah, I guess one of my things that um, I'm both unique and not unique is that I was one of the first that came at this from a museum professional side. Um, there's actually quite a few of us that are um, also museum professionals, library professionals, archive professionals as well, <coughs> both as Wikipedians and residents and as GLAM coordinators. <coughs> Excuse me, it's the third day. Voice is like completely gone. All right. So, well, you know, we have these specializations now, and so that's kind of a unique thing that we've come upon. But um, also, I was following not soon after Liam as the second ever Wikipedian in residence, I guess, at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis, and was really lucky in that they really wanted this long-term partnership. So I've actually been um, Wikipedian in residence there for two years, um, and they very graciously hired me, which I'm very thankful for. Um, and so I've been along on this ride for so long and from the very early days when we've kind of watched this grow and um, seen we'll try, you know, these different projects we've done, the Backstage Pass Evolve, the Edit-a-thon Evolve, and then just in this past year, this need grow from this immense interest from cultural institutions. Um, one of our things in the U.S. is that we have way too much interest from museums, I mean, and libraries and archives, dozens and dozens and dozens, and we do not have the Wikipedians um, to help them, um, or as many as we need. So it really came that there was this need to have someone pull everything together and organize and support in this way. Um, and one of my other unique things is that we, in the US, do not have a national chapter. We have some regional chapters. But with the scope of what this was, it made sense that the foundation would support this for a one-year stint. Um, and so now we're to a point where we're trying to get these GLAM professionals that have really risen to the occasion and have become experts in their own right over the past couple of years um, to really begin talking to each other and support each other, as well as the Wikipedians. And we're trying to do this through the thing I launched last night at the museum, the GLAM Wiki US Consortium. Um, which we don't know what this looks like yet. Um, I need you to help dialogue with me and figure it out, along with GLAM professionals. 
Um, but this will be a way that GLAMS can help GLAMS alongside Wikipedians and kind of the next step. So, yeah. Faye um, from the UK, I think you can offer a different perspective. Is it, I think you can hear me. I can, my, my voice is going as well. So <laughs> I don't actually smoke 40 a day, I just sound like it at the moment. Um, <laughs> I've, I'm, on this, I'm on this panel as a bit of a fraud because I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a national GLAM coordinator. But uh, in fact, I've spent the last two years trying not to be the national GLAM coordinator. I, I do control the budget. I control some big relationships. I picked up the British Museum once Liam got tired of it. And the <laughs> so I ran out of money living, living in London, volunteering and living in London for free. But thank you for your donation. The UK is very grateful. Um, uh, so I handle, handle some large institutions, which, which I have a lot of fun with. I'm not an expert, and I'm very, I'm very grateful not to be an expert. I think that actually helps. Um, <clears throat> so, so I've desperately tried not to be a bottleneck in the, in the progress the UK has. And we've done several very interesting things to do that. And, and, uh, my concept was to have an organically growing network because we had a problem of how, if I start a relationship, how does that get handed off and how does someone else get running on being an ambassador? And, and we've seen pe people like uh, John Cummings, who is at the back of the room. John, stand up. Stand hey, John. up there. Well, well done, John, for being... Jo jo John loves speedy John, jo John, of course, is, is famous for turning a town into a wiki town. Um, uh, what a wonderful initiative. And John wasn't a, wasn't a, a serious Wikipedia. Um, he just heard us talking in Bristol and uh, said, I've got a great idea, and um, we supported him. So I was very grateful that I didn't have to sort it out or understand what the hell that was about. Um, the, the, and, and to make that organic network work, we, um, we have social events and we see the GLAM network. I've also tried to devolve the budget, because I'm the chairman of the UK, and, quite busy with other nasty, difficult accounting things and so forth, which I really can't stand. And I don't want to have to coordinate GLAM as well. Everybody thinks that I do. And people like John here took over one of our relationships, for example. And you're sitting on the GLAM subcommittee, aren't you? Not John. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Um, so, so that takes over some of the responsibility for making that work. So that's not a national coordinator. It's a slightly different collaborative model of a large network. The UK feels quite large to me. We've got several groups with different languages. I have asked for a Welsh coordinator um, to deal with the, the Welsh Parliament, the Welsh language is all a very special area. So that, that will help us a lot, and similarly for Scotland. Um, and I think that's the way for us to recognise the UK as a rather complex environment with all sorts of cultural variations that need celebrating as part of our GLAM initiative. It, and it's actually incredibly difficult to bring someone up on how to manage a relationship with a large institution. It doesn't have to be an, an institutional professional, uh, but it takes a level of maturity that is actually quite rare amongst our volunteers. They're actually quite hard to find people that feel confident enough to stroll into someone like the historic royal palaces or the, uh, the Northwest collaboration of museums um, and actually have a serious chat about their millions of images and their program that they want to go forward and their commitment to access. You know. And we can have serious talks about all that. And now, of course, the UK is talking at a governmental and quite high level. Um, that's all jolly serious stuff, and it can absorb an awful lot of time. And unfortunately, it takes me away from the fun things like editathons, which I really want to spend more time on. Um, and unfortunately, you, once you get or start operating at these governmental levels, you spend all your time lobbying and trying to deal with copy fraud, as it was called yesterday in one of the presentations. Um, so okay. I think, uh, thank you. Uh, I think uh, Adrienne Alix from uh, France can also shed some light on how they do stuff in, in France. It's a bit different as well. And we like diversity, so let's hear a bit about their experiences. Hello. Um, maybe the particularity of uh, French uh, GLAM uh, uh, work, it, uh, we had uh, some GLAM projects before having a GLAM group and a GLAM coordinator. And I don't think I'm a coordinator. <laughs> uh, so we start to ask some uh, institutions since uh, 2007, I think, with the French National Library. And um, day after day, we, we um, create a GLAM group, essentially with a technical, um, technical uh, issue. And um, 
since uh, I think two or three years, we create a work group with um, uh, a list to discuss uh, together. And um, I was one of the people involved in this group. And after that, since one year, I'm uh, in the staff of the chapter, I'm the director of programs of the chapter. So GLAM is not my only job. And um, my job is to coordinate, to sustain, to help, to give contact, to uh, uh, give my experience, and uh, being the official person for some institutions. But I'm not a manager um, in French chapter. We think that um, every people can start and manage a project. <coughs> and my job is just to help and just to give um, my, my full-time uh, job and, um, and create a good relationship between institutions and um, Wikimedia members. It's not to create a community like you or to well, you manage know, you've some You've been project. around a bit more. We, you've been around a bit more than us. We're quite new to, to the whole scene, so we have different uh, challenges. But, um, but I think it's, um, again, <coughs> sorry, it's a matter of uh, how different um, countries even have different titles, or just like you doing, oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> just like you're doing um, also other programs, not only GLAM, um, there, there is uh, Axel Persson from um, Sweden, who's also um, doing educational programs. So maybe Axel can shed some light on his work. Yeah, I'm <coughs> Axel from the Swedish chapter, and I am hired by the Swedish chapter as a GLAM outreach coordinator and project manager. Um, I've been a Wikipedian on the Wikipedia, Wikimedia Sweden board for a while, and the difference in Sweden from, from the other countries is that I'm not only doing GLAM, I'm also doing the educational program and outreach to schools, to other bodies than, than GLAM bodies and uh, schools. So I've been at the Department of uh, Agriculture and teaching them how to use Wikipedia and how it could be used. Uh, so also the, the thing in Sweden within the GLAM sector is that the museums are realizing that they can't do it one and one. So we've just started collaborating with the Council of the Central Museums, so that's the 14 national museums that's coming to us together to learn together. So we're doing workshops and edit-a-tons with them where they will not be just one museum at the time, but they will rather have staff from more than one museum so they can continue collaborating between them when 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 they pick up picked up pace and uh, will be learning from each other and then see what's working and what's not working good. Thank you. And I think um, what you're doing, Barbara, maybe Barbara Fischer from um, Germany, um, she's, I think, our recent, right? You were elected um, to be the curator for GLAM efforts in Germany, um, I think really recently, like two months ago, three months ago. Please tell us a bit about that. Thank you, Shani. Actually, it was in the end of midst of April, I was um, chosen as to become the curator for cultural partnerships in Germany. Due to the fact that the Wikimedia chapter Germany has a very strong community, and um, this strong community has defined seven targets for their work uh, throughout 2012. And um, four of those um, are directly related to the GLAM community, um, which is like freeing content, what Liam said, and get more photos into Wikimedia Commons. Um, quality improvement is another important goal. Um, increase the diversity in authors or contributors. The gender gap, um, gap is, of course, very important. And uh, as you know, in many GLAM institutions, you find many women working. So it's a good opportunity to collaborate with GLAM institutions in order to get more women actively participate in the Wikipedia. And uh, as last target, we would have, like, not last, not last but not least, um, the volunteer support. So this strong community 
meets in Germany a rather hesitating glam community. It's not, as um, Laurie told us, that the glam institutions are knocking on our doors and really want us to collaborate uh, as soon as possible. They're more hesitating, they're critical. Some of them are anxious. Um, um, we might ex uh, experience that in other countries as well. So I was hired as a mediator, as a networker in between these two worlds. I'm not a Wikipedian. I, I think I will become a Wikipedian on the run, but um, first of all, I'm an art manager, and uh, that's the reason why I, I was uh, employed, because we hope, or the Wikimedia chapter hopes, that I would be able to work as a translator in between the two worlds. So we form like different formats in order to give the opportunity a chance to get in touch with GLAM um, institutions, and on the other side, we'll uh, direct directly to um, opinion leaders in the community uh, of the GLAMs. Uh, I would be really happy if we would have our council of GLAM institutions ready for collaboration. Um, maybe we will be so far in autumn. Thank you. So I think it's quite amazing to uh, listen to so many different ways of doing things in, uh, around the world. And um, if, if we started with a small country just uh, starting, Israel, we've been only doing it for a year, we are a tiny country. I think it would be quite fitting to, to finish uh, this part of the panel with Nupur Aval from a huge country, India, um, but also only starting out and having a totally different experience than what you've been hearing here. So I'd like to throw another experience into this, uh, this pot before we start talking about what's in common to all of us. So, Nupur? Hi. Um, so I don't really know where to begin, but um, since the discussion is on the National GLAM coordinator, I also don't happen to be one, only because the chapter doesn't have a position which is called the National GLAM coordinator. Yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So the, no, I think that's nice because then it doesn't create hierarchies and there's not a rigidified position right away, but there's a lot of scope for more people to come in and take up smaller roles and do things. Uh, we haven't really had um, partnerships until January. So the first partnership came along with the Crafts Museum. Now, there are a couple of pointers, especially because we're talking India, it's really unique because the first GLAM project is actually happening in Hindi, which is an Indian language. So we started out thinking it would be in English, but realized that the staff uh, speaks and writes better in Hindi. So we had to change our strategy, figure things around how they would participate in Hindi. Another thing is, um, how we discussed earlier, is that the GLAM coordinator, whoever that person is, does this very crucial thing where they, they coordinate between the museum and their expectations. So the moment you step into a museum, they actually give you a list of things that they want done, which might even include making their website and you know doing tons of other things, which you will obviously not do. And on the other hand, it's about the Wikipedian community. And you don't want to appear like a sellout or somebody who's trying to simplify Wikipedia, you know, just so that people can upload like thousands of pictures and forget about it. You really want to do something which is called sustainable community building. So the, the, the dialogue that I had with the director in the first month is where we told them that, look, it's not going to be possible to make 30 good articles right in the first or the second month, or that's not what we want to focus on. We'd rather have five or six guys who learn how to edit Wikipedia who learn that it's important for them. And these are guys who don't have internet at home. These are guys who, who, have, who don't even probably have a computer. So for them, it should be actually an incentive to come to the museum and work when they're not paid for it and edit Wikipedia, see the joy of you know seeing their stuff there. So we've also been trying to work around references because the way it goes on English Wikipedia right now, you know, it's, it's kind of tough if you don't have um, references for indigenous material or crafts and things like that. So we've had an entirely new set of challenges. Yes, and I think it's um, a perfect way to begin the third part of our panel. 
and talk a bit about um, what it takes to, to actually w do um, whatever it is that we do. And um, the first thing is exactly what Nupur said and uh, Faye mentioned as well, is that we, we have, all of us, we have to know how to talk to institutions. It wouldn't work any other way. So that's a crucial thing, and, and as Faye said, it's not a job every Wikipedian is, is uh, prepared to do. None of them, uh, some of them don't like it, simply. Simple as that, some of them don't have the maturity. So um, it takes uh, specific characteristics or um, abilities to, uh, to do just that. And I just wanna give the speaking uh, <laughs> permission to all of you to just uh, help me in a way formalize um, and characterize what the common denominator of what all of us do is. So, please. Oh, am I starting? Oh, <laughs> um, well, you know, I was really inspired what, um, by what Nupor was saying. I completely agree with the fact that, you know, we're, we're kind of moving beyond this, just going out and grabbing images. I feel like this is a common thread we've been talking about. Obviously, we're still going out and getting images from all over, um, and that's great. But to supplement that, what's important is now that we're moving on to community building, community engagement, and these long-term cooperations all over the world, and we're you know, really coming into our own with outreach. I mean, we're a very strong community when it comes to outreach. We're creating new editors, um, both male and female, um, and I feel like that's really where we've grown into, is it's not just about going out and stealing all the images, but it's about um, creating content um, and creating new editors and just building that community. Right, and, and you need a, a national perspective to do it. Yes. And another thing that you mentioned is um, some countries do have a lot of project at the same time, and you somehow need to, to manage it, and you can't do it if you only have a perspective of one specific project. You need a broader um, view in order to um, to also not burn the community. I mean, for us in Israel, we have, for every um, collaboration that we have in, with an institution, we always, um, events are a huge part of what we do, and we are a very small community, so we need to always think about how to um, maybe spread all the events and make sure that the community um, is, is ready to, to help us and not burn out. Because, um, for example, as, as I said, one of our focuses um, doing glam is always outreach. We always we are always concerned about bringing new editors to the community in general. That's a thing that everybody is concerned with, uh, not only us. We are only using the glam platform to do it, and it's a great platform. Some people um, actually just like I joined. <laughs> I joined because I loved glam. The idea fascinated me, and that's cool. I mean, we should allow other people from the public to join just for that and through time they'll become Wikipedians and they'll become part of the community but we need a process to enable it so yes maybe to to illustrate you um, for example in France we have now too much glam projects in progress and um, and we don't have enough volunteer to do that and it's important for me to have a global view of the project to say for, for example, I have a, a project, um, very interesting, but um, we need a lot of volunteers to do that. And I know that we cannot know. And I can say to the director of the museum, okay, if you want to do this project, you must give money to pay one people to do the project. If you cannot, we can do the project. It's very important to have a global view right. of all the projects. It's, yeah. it's a good problem to have that now we are it's the other way around. We're not trying to break into these museums and try and get heard. They're trying to get heard from us. Um, but it is still a problem that once you get beyond the, into that position where there's more of them than you, once you get beyond the first person within or working with a particular institution and they leave after after the school holidays or after their internship is finished or whatever, then what happens? How do you, so you built a relationship with the British Museum or Musée de Toulouse or with uh, um, Prince of Wales Museum or whoever, whichever museum or, or library archive. 
and then what happens? And that, that's where the, the extra role of national coordinator or facilitator or whatever you want to call it, doesn't have to yeah. be a, a, and it can be a committee like in France, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but the requirement of an ongoing relationship and someone to hand over to be the contact for the, the person, that the advocate within that institution is really important because that person, in my case at the British Museum, it was the head of the website division. In other places it's from the legal department, in other places it's from the curatorial or the librarian staff. It can be different divisions. They have invested political power or political money, as it were. They've spent their, their power on this idea and they've sold it to their staff, to their colleagues, that we should work with Wikipedia. Some, kind, some places that will be very expensive for that person to do, and some places it will be easy. But we can't then go and disappear on them after a, a two-week project or a three-month project. We have to be professional. Right? And because Wikipedia is supposed to be around for a long time, we want to build up long-term relationships, not just get lots of images once. And that's where the need for some kind of ongoing professional, not necessarily paid, but by professional I don't mean to throw money at it, I mean it's a behaviour thing, it right. um, is, is, becomes necessary. Right, and I think it's, yeah, sure. Is this on? <laughs> well, um, on the money thing, I'll just point out that um, after working at this for a couple of years, so I'm quite naive still, um, there's no shortage of money. Um, uh, in the UK, we've created a Wikimedian in residence with the British Library that's taken not a penny from our donated funds. It's the best paid position we've ever seen on the planet. How did that happen? Well, uh, we approached the Arts and Humanities Research Council and they fell over themselves to find such an innovative project and sponsor it. And the reason is because funding bodies um, are concerned about access and engagement and we tick those boxes beautifully. Can anybody identify that tune? I'll give, give you 10 points for identifying that tune. But so, so I think that the, the, the money discussion is interesting. We're all very sensitive about it because volunteers do things for free. But if institutions want that to happen for year after year, it's got to be professionalized and it's got to be, you know, paid sensibly for and integrated into their, their own program of access. And uh, the institutions and funding bodies I'm talking to now want to find a better way forward. And some of that, for those of you that have access to uh, government institutions, um, actually they need to build that into their, their policy at the high level about, uh, about their commitment to public assets. It includes open knowledge, it includes us. We can't be ignored anymore. I don't think we were ever being ignored, but we're more visible now than we've ever been. The phrase, I think, was, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. <laughs> I think we've won. <laughs> we're, we're definitely won. We're here. We are, and I think besides having um, a recognizable face for GLAMS to, to know, okay, I can speak to that person, it's also about um, having a coherent and consistent voice uh, when, you when you talk to different GLAMs. So for us, it was important to, um, to try to, to create a certain level of, um, uh, how should I put it, um, just, just to be um, coherent and without um, doing it for project after project after project, it's just impossible. If it's a new person coming in for each um, deliberation, um, with um, an institution, it's very hard to do. So, Lupur? I just wanted to add something. So, um, while we were talking about having a national GLAM coordinator, and you know, if we were to make a list of things that the GLAM coordinator should have or should not have, uh, I think something very important should be a kind of empathy or understanding of the arts or the field that you'd be working with. And this was important because when you go into the museum, you, you end up speaking to a bunch of people who are really passionate about the kind of stuff they're doing. So it's, it's important for somebody who's coordinating projects or building relationships to have that kind of patience and bandwidth to be able to entertain 
questions on sensitivities of the art market or you know the things that they want to discuss so it can't just be a single way dialogue where you tell and you know this is wikipedia and we want to do this and that's all that's going to come out it's got to be a little more than that so so that even you as a person learn like it always helps totally. me edit articles when i have conversations with them yeah right and i think barbara is the extreme uh, example of that because she's uh, um, she really comes from the field of museums and being a professional on that level and uh, and so it's interesting to to have that experience as well yeah actually i think that's pretty vital for um, for the collaboration because um, as we have been saying here um, we would like to have the dialogue not just for a short moment but we would like to keep it going for years so that would mean that when we train the employees for from a museum for instance or of a gallery to become uh, Wikipedians, that means that they, they need to have somebody to turn to. Like we, we will have a change in, maybe a change in culture in, in the Wikimedia universe um, because other people will, will come to the Wikipedia than before. And this, I, I feel, has to be monitored and um, followed up. And then the other reason why I believe that it's very important to have um, a person constantly working on that field is that um, all the experience that is gathered through the different projects, it's not only the Wikimedia and residents, um, there are like QR code workshops going on, there are like uh, photograph Wikilabs sessions. Uh, I mean, there are so many different forms of collaborating with GLAM institutions. Can't always number them all here, but um, still, all of them make their own experiences and it is good to uh, collect them and revise them and have like perform some kind of evaluation. We now, with the two Wikipedians we have started just recently, we uh, came up with a questionnaire that the institutions is able to evaluate like how was it before we started and how it's gonna be when, when we end that, that stage and are we content with what we uh, um, obtained. So um, I think the community is very strong and, and it is very good to have this volunteer force, but still it might be as good as well to have like somebody that is um, not controlling, but mentoring a bit like the movement, how it's going on. Yes, and I think um, uh, what you all said uh, brings us to the may maybe last and important point before we um, answer questions and um, start a debate here. And that is all of us have to be um, in a way good in translating to, to the outside world what, what it is that we do. And uh, part of being in the community means um, letting p other people know what your projects are. So you need to do it on the national level, letting the community know, letting maybe in the chapter blog as we do it. Um, but also um, on the international level. And so, and, and conferences, like international or national conferences that are not related only to Wikipedia, but being part of, of the discussion, the ongoing discussion, and being, and giving a voice um, to all these collaborations that are happening um, through Wikipedia slash Wikimedia slash. <laughs> okay, so thank you to all the panel members and right now we'd like to to have questions and uh, um, open a debate with the audience I'm sure you have questions and I actually um, before we get started I have one of our first questions on Twitter that's from someone who's not here at Wikimania um, it's actually my dear friend Colleen Dylan Schneider who's a social media expert here in the US and she asked what is a glam coordinator and I said well let's ask um, so I am um, my, and I know that, you know, Shawnee, you really, you got into it very much in the beginning, but I, um, and to just throw my first little definition in is, we had talked earlier about how we kind of work in concentric circles, that um, we kind of coordinate on our national level, we have this omniscient view, but then we also are a bridge to this wider circle of our broader glam community, um, our global glam community. And we've touched on this a lot today too, but that's really what's the surprisingly valuable thing is the community we've really built around Glam Wiki. And um, 
just having that connection and being that bridge to them and th those resources and our models we've built, I think is a really important aspect to all this. Definitely. I'm happy for others to define what a GLAM coordinator is. <laughs> okay. So questions from the audience? Yeah, in the back. Yeah, in the back. Uh, hi guys, I'm uh, Srike from India. Um, I was just typing out the question on Twitter, but before I could get through, <laughs> I, I got the chance. Anyway, um, the question that I was asked, I uh, was thinking of was, uh, like Nupur was saying as, uh, as well earlier that, I mean, um, when we, and this happens a lot, especially I can understand the context being India, when you approach like institutions for Wikipedia work, they just take for granted that you're doing stuff on the digital realm. So they might ask you to make their website and ask you to handle their regular social media stuff and all the things like that. So um, my question here is that, is there to, to avoid, and since we obviously can't do that and we are in the position, I mean, at that, at that stage when we are asking them to collaborate with us, we tell them, no, we cannot do this for you, kind of a deal breaker in some way. So is there some sort of, um, protocol or set of procedures or a standard operating procedure that uh, can be in place or is in place that we can apply to GLAM projects and associations across the world? I think, um, okay, I'll try to answer and um, my friends can help and end. I think there is, uh, first of all, we have to remember that there's just no one way to do GLAM. And it's really important, um, we talked a lot today about being in touch with the international community. I think that's crucial. I think without knowing um, what's happening around the world, um, you'd be weaker in what you do. Um, and I think there are certain things that you can um, use other people's experience, I mean, if, it's, if it fits you. For example, we in Israel, um, in every Wikipedia in resident, um, project that we, that we had, it's really tempting for, and I think Nuker can agree and everybody else, that it's really tempting for the institution to want the person to write articles. And so one of the first things we do is say, well, a Wikipedian in residence, by definition, does not write articles. That's not his job. His job is to be in touch with um, the staff members, to educate others, to be um, a, sort of, a sort of bridge between the community and the institution, and to facilitate knowledge um, being uh, broadcasted in, through Wikipedia and Commons and other ways. But again, <laughs> you need to, to know what's happening um, in other places, and, and then you have a really strong um, case when you say, listen, this is what's happening all over the world. It's not only here. And we have a way of doing things. And this is what's working, and this is not. Uh, this is not. So it's a, it's a, um, you need to, to have the tool set, in a way, and then see what happens uh, with the people that you work with to, to be able to really give uh, an answer and um, formulate what's, uh, how your project is going to look like. To, to answer on, on two levels. So first about what the individual can do to not be abused in their position to just be a volunteer on something else instead. Uh, but then also at the national level. Um, for me at the British Museum, we had a, a kind of, it didn't have a contract, but the, the kind of mission statement was that in neither the Wikimedia community nor the museum could require me as the volunteer to do something that was against the policies or procedures of the other. Because both groups, especially as the first, were worried about being abused or taken advantage of. Right? And that gives the individual quite a lot of power because neither group knows what the policies and procedures of the other <laughs> is. Uh, so you can say, oh, no, I can't do that. They won't let me. Uh, but so there's, there is a lot of uh, as an individual, especially as a volunteer, you can feel quite powerless and small, but you are actually representing a very powerful brand. So you can actually stand up for things like, I will not run your Twitter account. And at a more national level, that's the kind of thing that a national cultural partnerships coordinator can do. 
by having someone who is the boss, for the, from the purposes of the museum or the, the library, you can say, yes, this is the boss. You know, internally, it, it's more confusing, but for their purposes. So if the individual has a problem, like in any organizational situation, you can just say, no, I'm just a volunteer, talk to my superiors, and, and here's the phone number, here's the, the official um, method. And even if there is no agreed policy for how you do it, just having something that looks like a hierarchical organizational structure, that you can pretend Helps. to be an organizational structure for that five minute period, helps standardize it to make sure you're not abused as a volunteer. And also it helps to, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Not Woo. being abused as a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, and it also helps, and I think experience teaches everybody, all of us who are doing it uh, from project to project, to be very clear from day one about what it is that we want to do. And uh, I can say for myself that I usually don't uh, start any project without a very clear definition. Um, so we write something and then the institution can um, react to it and usually they like, in Israel they like it. Um, they just don't want to uh, think too much about it. They love that I bring them something and they can, we can then work on it and define the project specifically. Um, all the milestones and things that are measurable. But it's really important to, to, to also say that there are non measurable things that we do in every project. And just like Nupur said, it's, it's not necessarily about the amount of articles that we would write immediately at the first uh, just, month. Yeah. No, just to quickly add, and then we can move on, is that we learned it the hard way, actually. Uh, is that when we stepped into the museum, we realized that they really needed our help. Like, and, and you know, if there's somebody who's been with uh, arts and doing stuff, it's even more tempting for you to just step in and say, well, I'll do it for you. So it's not exactly that you allow yourself to be abused, but you want to help them set things up and make sure they do it. But after a while, like two months down the line, what I realized is that the amount of bureaucracy involved didn't make it any easier for them to implement what you would suggest. So anyway, you know, us spending time suggesting things wasn't really helping out. So what I did is, then help them expand their network. So there were volunteers who were coming in uh, and wanted to learn editing, and our bargain would be that we teach you editing, we give you a fun time at the museum, and you in turn then can maybe spend some more time helping the director out with X, Y, Z. So it's really about that outreach, you spread the network, and you remain intact as a coordinator, not doing the actual Yes, work. and I think flexibility in general is um, an important trait. And just to help you um, know, know your material, but also be flexible enough to just find the right solution in every, in every project. Yeah, we have another question. Hi, I'm, Hi Andy. I'm Andy Mabbitt. I'm Pigs on the Wing on Wikipedia and on Twitter. Um, last year, I was the uh, Wikipedia Outreach Ambassador to an organization called Archive, which maintains a digital archive relating to natural history, um, and effectively a Wikipedian in residence. And I want to take issue with a couple of the statements that have been made so far by various people, and I think there's a danger of people seeing a Wikipedian in residence. Liam's laughing because I'm taking issue with somebody already, I think. Um, I think there's a danger of people making black and white statements about a Wikipedian residence is X and shouldn't be Y, and we have to recognise that these are very, very varied roles. So firstly, in my role, I wrote articles. It was understood from the beginning that yeah. that was what I would do, uh, and I actually went in and to an organisation that expected me to just one. write articles and mm -hmm. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm also going to do volunteer engagement and training and so on. But, uh, but it was very much a large part of yeah. what I did was writing articles. The second thing is, um, if an organisation decides to employ a Wikipedian in residence, I think it's perfectly legitimate for them to say 80% of this role is the Wikipedian in residence and 20% is doing social media or tidying the website. We, we as Wikipedians, uh, particularly as chapters who might be sponsoring or supporting that post, have to have a negotiation with the organisation when it comes to drawing up a job description about whether or not that's a sensible thing to do, uh, what effect it might have on the Wikipedian 
Wikipedia part of the role, but if the only way to get a post in place is for it to be an 80% Wikipedia post and 20% something else, that can be perfectly legitimate as long as everybody totally. involved understands that. And it's very different being paid to being a volunteer because obviously if you're taking the book, you have to do what the boss says. Right, and but I, I, think I want people to recognise it. It's not a one-size-fits-all. No, not at all. It's very and, different. And I think we've talked a, a lot about the diversity, not only about um, this job of coordinator of sorts, but of course, a Wikipedian in residence as a role itself is not just one thing. Every project is different, and everything uh, depends on really how you um, uh, identify what it is that you want to achieve in this project. So, of course. We are. We actually agree. Yeah. Question: Do you have a uh, criteria for what does qualify as a glam institution? For example, here in America, we've got you know Madame Trousseau's uh, Wax Museum, which is largely a a commercial institution, and and I understand there was one other country where they wanted to make a sports organization a glam institution. Do you have a set criteria for deciding what is uh, within the glam umbrella and what is is not. I think we have well expanded beyond only galleries, archives, museums, uh, and uh, and that's one of the and libraries, of course. Um, I think it's um, well. We have a zoo now. We have a town. We we are doing so many things. So I think it really um, it's really come to a point where it uh, it's beyond. Uh, the, the very narrow, um, I mean, Glam is a great brand. It sounds excellent. People, yeah, and uh, scientific, um, scientific um, uh, institutions are all also working with us. So there are so many different things now. I think Glam is a, a, a really strong brand name, and it's really nice to, um, to say it, but it's, it's way evolved beyond that. And I think it depends on the specific case. I, I think it's a case to, based on specifics and each project we, each chapter or each person who's doing it can check if it fits or not and I think we've, it's, we've it's much more flexible today. individual things, whether this right. comes in, does not. Yeah. Ultimately, personally, it doesn't matter. Yeah. As long as the benefit for that project of being associated with the broader glam church is a net positive for the, the whole thing. So right. if it helps that, that thing, but harms the broader glam pro projects, that's, then you shouldn't. I also but if it, if it helps both, and then it doesn't matter, that's great. Yeah, it's just a cute acronym. Yeah, and, and one thing we've talked about before and didn't uh, really have a chance to, to uh, discuss now uh, in the panel is that usually um, most of us also deal with uh, academia. I mean, it's part, uh, it's, it's, um, it's so natural, it comes with the territory, sort of say. Um, all of us, in one way or another, are dealing with academic institutions as well, and it's, it's very much connected. There are academic projects um, that are separate to GLAM, but I think there is um, some kind of uh, in-between things, so it's really flexible, and it's really about connections and uh, Sometimes the, the most serendipitous uh, meeting can, can lead to a beautiful project. So you, we, ne we try not to say no and to uh, keep an open mind and see if it fits the general uh, agenda. <laughs> May I just um, ask an um, like answer to your question? I would say Madame Tussaud is then a valuable a collaboration partner if we're not talking about pictures of the famous persons they are exhibiting. But if we talk about the work techniques they're using to create these wax figures, then um, to illustrate that and to get, to get this knowledge shared with the world, that would, might be a very interesting part. And, hmm? Yes, yeah, and, and, and it's like, just like what uh, Jimmy said on the opening ceremony, mm -hmm. talking about fashion. I think it's a really good example. It, uh, we can uh, have a glam project with a fashion institution as long as we um, keep it um, in terms of creating um, or facilitating knowledge and having more um, better articles and better examples and uh, relationships that we are building with experts in their field. So as long as we are doing it, it's, it's good enough to be under the umbrella of glam. Any other questions? Yeah, John. Woohoo, John. Oops. 
Hello. Um, sorry if this is a bit of a rambly question. Um, so when I've worked with uh, different institutions before, I've realised that um, we have lots and lots of skills, not only editing Wikipedia, that other institutions would like to, to know. Um, I've done some work with OpenStreetMap as well, and I'm, the, all these projects kind of link together, and Wikipedia feeds other projects, and other projects feed Wikipedia. I'm just wondering like, what we can do better to work with other projects, like OpenStreetMap, OpenCMap, and lots of other ones that I can't remember at the moment. That's a Thanks. really good question. I think it's all about the power of the community when it comes down to it. It's, it's more about um, having a network of people who are doing it for a long time, who know other people, and try to interlink um, and cross paths whenever it's possible. And Lori, do you want to say something? I feel like we're already doing a really good job of this in different ways. So we have a great relationship with the Open Knowledge Foundation, thanks yeah. to Daniel, um, and beyond. I mean, they took the GLAM um, acronym and they ran with it. And they have a whole blog, Open GLAM now, which they um, do different events both with us and then on their own. And we're actually going to have a conference that, yeah. with them on mm -hmm. now. Um, um, for a recent example, we actually just had a meeting with Old Weather, which is a crowdsourcing transcription site, and we're now looking into how we can better connect with them. So there really are so many, and we have, of course, Wikimedia in general has a good um, relationship with Creative Commons, but we've worked with them with Glam as well. But Adrian, can I speak more about the Knowledge Foundation? Um, with Open Knowledge Foundation, we, we work to make some uh, recommendations for the French Ministry of Culture about public domain and um, other issues about intellectual property. And um, we, we work with uh, the OpenStreetMap community too. And for GLAM project, it's very interesting because um, the, the two communities, Wikimedians and uh, uh, OpenStreetMap, are very close. And um, in our GLAM community, we have a lot of uh, technical um, Wikimedians. And uh, we can do some very interesting projects with um, localization of uh, GLAM uh, um, of monuments and uh, other right. things. And I think we must have a very open, opening of this, open view mm -hmm. <laughs> to, uh, to um, buy some projects with uh, all the communities involved in uh, open content, open um, knowledge. And I know Faye from the UK has all also been in touch with the Open Knowledge Foundation, no? Yes? Yes, um, uh, the, the UK charity very specifically doesn't restrict itself to Wikimedia. We, um, we deal with open knowledge in a very general way. And open source. Um, so, so, so we're also open to having partnerships with those that also support open knowledge in a general way. Exactly. So, so we use our funds for all those purposes. Um, so it's very much written into our core. So, so for John's question, John, we're very, very happy for you to be paid to work with those other organisations. And I would love to give you some, some money to go and wave at you. <laughs> Anyone else? And, uh, and, 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 any other good. questions? Us, uh, in Sweden, with the OpenStreetMap organisation, we're always trying to reach out to them. And then when we're doing community projects, we're offering them to, to get funded if they need and when we're out on photo safaris, we always do mapping while we're out there. So it's sort of the same people involved in both communities. So it's not really that big a step between. Yeah, no problem. John. Yeah. And coming to John's question, and again, going back to the Indian uh, scene, I think it's really important uh, that I share this with you because the way we've been working is like this whole patched up thing. So we don't have a concrete platform and you know, a glam society or a committee or something. So we yes. just take anything that comes by, right? <laughs> so uh, I think a couple of months ago, uh, there was somebody uh, user around the globe who wanted to work on QRpedia. But since we had nobody, I mean, we already just have a handful of guys working in any glam project at all. And there was nobody to support him in the Indian community. And since he's been interacting with the UK community, uh, he was able to, I think, speak to Roger. And um, he actually went and set up QR codes in temples in a city in India. 
So he's been doing that. So that way, I think it, it really works out great if you are connected to the global community, coming back to the global point, yeah. be on the mailing list, so you always know of opportunities. And you know, you don't have to be restricted to your country or your chapter. So that's right. totally. So we have time for one more question. No question. Something on Twitter? What? Okay, so. Okay, so I'd like to thank everybody uh, from all these various countries um, who came into this panel. And thank you for keeping up with us. Thank you. Thank you.